glad you are back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So I've sort of been thinking about last night's fucked up Friday. That guy Brandon, the archetypical wild child that fucking lived hard, died young, just couldn't get off the booze, died of cirrhosis of the liver. And I've been thinking about what a fucking, what a waste it is. But I know exactly what it is. It's a fucking trap. Like, a little bit the fucked up Fridays is condoning that bad behavior. And what happens is, it especially happened to me, is you get fucking, you get lauded. You get lauded for your crazy behavior and it makes you feel good. And then because it feels good, you do it again. Your crazy behavior gets applauded, especially when you're younger. Way more when you're younger than when you're older. When you're older, it becomes very sad. But what happens is your crazy behavior when you're younger gets praised and lauded and everyone thinks you're a fucking hero. And then that crazy behavior becomes somewhat your personality. So you end up being trapped in this like fucking show-offy, wild, crazy persona that isn't actually you. It's just a character you're playing, but you begin identifying more and more and more with that character. And also, you need to go to more and more extremes to get your kicks. And then what eventually happens is you feel like Unless you're doing the crazy things, people aren't going to find you interesting. You're just going to be a boring cunt. So you end up becoming a prisoner of yourself. And because you think the only reason people hang out with you or want to be around you is because you're fucking whatever, the life of the party type thing, you know the booze brings that out of you. So you become even more dependent on the fucking drinking. And it's a vicious cycle and everything just gets more and more extreme and it's a very fucking difficult prison to break out of. That's why you've got to be very (laughs) fucking careful when you're the life of the fucking party. I remember reading Jim Morrison's biography by fucking Sugarman or whatever the fuck his name was and it just sounded like Jim Morrison just wanted to break out of that fucking character or the persona that he had built, but he kept getting dragged back into it because of people's expectations of him. And it just ends up one way. You end up fucking dead. Honestly, that was the hardest thing for me. I'd built this fucking persona and this character of Boyle, and I just couldn't fucking break out of it. At first, it was like sort of fun and then it just gets dark because you just have to go to more and more extremes just to fucking get some feeling and then you sort of lose it in the end anyway and you're just being mean and you're fucking not fun to be around it happens to everyone you just become a nightmare so I had to come to terms with the fact that I was just going to be a boring cunt. That was one of the fucking biggest switches in my head that I had to make to be successful at giving up alcohol was, all right, I have to kill that character. I was going to keep it for the stage and it still does come out a little bit on stage and also in the podcast, but for all intents and purposes, it's fucking dead, sort of. I've also been having some hesitation with the fucked up Fridays, glorifying the bullshit, but I think it's all part of the fucking journey. I will tell you this though, now I've been doing this like four and a half years, quite a lot of people now have given up booze for extended periods of time. I've got some people who've given up for like four years, two years, three, fuck. There's a few going on and also the people who have quit drinking before they found my podcast for like 20 years, 10 years, whatever. And I can tell you this, if you're thinking about giving up drinking, I can tell you this, and it's 100% across the board. Everyone who has given up drinking 
for an extended period of time has said it's the best decision they've ever made and their life is infinitely better. So no matter what you think in your head, no matter what that fucking conversation with yourself about quitting drinking is, know that if you do it for long enough, there is a 100% chance your life is going to get better and it will turn out to be the best decision you've ever made. (laughs) 100% chance. I've never heard anyone say their life hasn't got better. If you know that, then it sort of makes the fucking... (laughs) The decision to quit may be a little bit easier, but still, it's that conversation in your head. Fucking, should I quit? No, fucking, I enjoy drinking. Fucking, uh, I'm better when I drink. I'm funnier. Things are better. I like having fun. I know. I know it all. But like, at some point, you got to say, all right, that was one part of my life. Now, That part of my life is over. I've got everything I've needed out of that part of my life. I had a fucking ball. Now, I'm not willing to let it kill me. I can't fucking do it. I can't manage it. I'm going to have to leave that part of me behind. And I'm going to have to start a new life. Explore some new territory. You know what I mean? It's just a new part of your life. You thought you were going to be able to drink and party for your entire life, but sorry, it's not sustainable for some people, most people. The earlier you come to terms with that, the earlier you can move on. And the longer it takes you, the harder it is to break out of that prison you created for yourself. Like the prison, it sounds like Brandon got trapped in, that not only millions of people get trapped in, It's just another fucking sad story. Anyway, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt the I'm Quitting Alcohol podcast with some actual talk about quitting alcohol, but it had to be done. (laughs) Don't worry. I'm talking rib again tomorrow. No, I'm not talking rib again tomorrow. Fuck my rib. Who cares? That's it. That's it for today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you the fuck later.